Okay, folks, listen. Today I'm making my grandmama's biscuits and gravy, right? But this time I went ahead and leveled up the biscuits. Listen, super easy. And as you can see, I got some ingredients right here, right? So these ingredients are on my website, along with the full printable recipe with the direction, folks. And that's smoking and grilling with ab.com and that's w-i-t-a-b.com. Now, what I'm getting ready to do is, I'm finna start by, you know, getting my bacon bits together, right? Cause we gonna put bacon inside the biscuits. Super easy, but I want you guys to pay attention. Listen, this is the beef bacon I've been talking about in all of these videos right here. This is from Porter Road. You guys gotta get this right here. Super good. Uh, you can use pork if you have pork, but I suggest you guys go ahead and get yourself some of this right here, and this will change the way you look at it. Okay, so look, now look, this right here is gonna be more like a, like a little, dump and go, right? You wanna just take all of your ingredients that you have that you measured out, right? We just wanna put them in a bowl, right? No right way or wrong way. And then you wanna just add yourself about a, a cup of the cheese, right? Now these biscuits right here are gonna be fire, folks. This is, what, this is what we wanna do, just whisk it all together, get it combined. Don't forget we put those other ingredients in there. You know what I mean? But you can see it, it's gonna have a little cheese in it. You see that right there? Then if you wanna add a little bit more to it, I just say you can. It's really, the trick here is just don't put too much in there. You know, you don't want them to be just like super cheesy, unless you do. Okay, so now you just wanna go ahead and just add in your parsley, you know, and then you wanna put your bacon in there. Now we get down to the interesting part, right? Listen, you wanna get yourself about three quarter cup of butter, but check this out, we gonna grate it, right? So I'm gonna bring this over here, I'm gonna find my, you find the size grate that you wanna use, and then we just grate it. Listen, this is key. Your butter needs to be frozen. Now, once you got it done, I'm not finished yet. I still gotta add a little bit to it. I gotta grate a little bit more, but what I'm gonna do is just make a little bit of room, right? So we just put this in here just like that, right? So now you guys get to see what it looks like. You see that? That's it. Now we can finish this one and then we'll have three quarter cup. All right, so now all of it is done. All right, so now I'm gonna take my whisk out, right? I'm gonna set this off to the side. What we wanna do is, I'm just gonna take my little wooden spoon here and just kinda like just fold it over. You know what I mean? We don't wanna beat it up. And you know, of course it's gonna start to become room temperature, right? So we just work it like this. Look, this is what make these type of biscuits like this, you know, so fire. You gotta start with the you know, the frozen butter, you got to grate it, right? You gonna watch this turn into something magical. Now, my grandma made them just like everybody else, you know what I mean? She used a lot of different, uh, I guess, herbs and spices, you know, to get what she want, but just about everybody makes them about the same, but where we gonna level these up is, that's how we added that, you know, that beef bacon. You know what I mean? That right there did it in a little parsley, gives it color and a little bit of texture and taste. You can't beat it. Okay, so look, I'll just make a little indentation here in the, you know, in the middle. Right, that's cool. You don't have to do that, but I like doing that, especially when you're making your video so you can see it. Now, this is my buttermilk. Now, I'm gonna go ahead and just add that in there just like that. Now, I'm getting ready to change utensils and I'm finna go with my spatula, right? Spatula help me get all of my buttermilk out also. Now, we finna get this and we just take it, kind of like just like work it in, just like this. Now, what we doing is making a dough, folks. If we haven't said that already or you guys haven't figured it out, but you see how I'm just folding this over just like this? You know what I mean? It's starting to absorb. Now this is gonna turn into a ball of dough, right? It's gonna be nice and tacky. I want you guys to pay attention because this part right here is really, really key. So I done cleaned up every, you know, all of my surroundings right here because I'm gonna be using this slate right here. You know, my countertop, this is where we are gonna kinda like make it. You know, make the dough, right? So I'm gonna put a little flour down, but I just wanna show you, when you get to this consistency right here, look at this. You see that right there? You see how that is? This is what I'm saying. When it starts to look like this, it won't all be mixed as of yet, but it will be in just a minute, right? So I'm gonna slide that over. I'm gonna go in here, get myself a generous pinch. Let's do two, right? We put this down so nothing sticks, right? I think I'm gonna go with a third one, right? And this is where we are gonna make the dough ball. You know what I mean? Now you're gonna need a rolling pin for this. You guys, listen, I done seen people do this with a can. You know what I mean? Uh, however you do it. So when you're making biscuits and sausage gravy or any just biscuits by itself, you wanna have a rolling pin, right? That's another thing you're gonna need too, which I'll leave a link. And that's gonna be, uh, I got a biscuit cutter. That right there is key. You can pick them up a dime or a dozen. 
they only like about eight or nine dollars maybe ten bucks you know what i mean you get all different sizes right now I get in here with my hand first and kind of like just work it so i can get me a ball right now i'm gonna take it drop it right there where you put the flour at and here you don't want to overwork it right you want it to be flaky so i want you guys to pay attention to the way i'm gonna do this right so spring it over there's a lot of moisture in here so we got to get it to at least adhere so that it doesn't crack up right so when i have it then i take it and i fold it over and i just give it a little try not to overwork it right and i'm gonna bring it over this way again and when i see it breaking like that that tells me we about ready right so now we want to get our rolling pin if you feel like it's sticking which i feel like mine is just a little bit what i'm gonna do is i'm gonna put a little bit more flour down all right so you can see i put a little bit more flour down because i don't want it to stick because we're getting ready to roll right but if you got a rolling pin you're gonna need to put a little bit of flour on here too you know what i mean just to help it so that this doesn't stick you know to it right so we have it i got it now i'm just gonna roll this out you don't need a whole lot of pressure in the very beginning because it's gonna spread right so then you come across this way this is the way i found it to be the best and when I see these cracks like this, that tell me these are gonna be nice and flaky, folks. All right, so now I put a little bit more pressure on it and I bring this down like this. Oh yeah, look at this right here. Now, the size and the thickness that we are looking for, we wanna go to about, a, uh, about an inch and a quarter. That's good right there, you know? So I wanna bring this over this way, bring it out, put a little flour. I know I got enough flour down this way because I saw it moving. Right, as I was rolling, I could see the whole thing sliding. That tell me nothing is sticking. All right, so now we do it again. Beauty of it is, once we get everything cut out of here, you know what I mean? Like say I can't get nothing out of this piece, whatever's left, I work it in together, roll that out, and we get some more. Now I want you guys to pay attention right here. This is the size that I'm gonna be using, right? You can see, if I open this up right now, it's got all different sizes. There's one size even bigger than this, but this is a good little size right here to use, right? So I'm looking at my thickness, I look at that, uh i say that's good enough you know just getting a little that going you're gonna need to get yourself a a baking sheet right so look i got a silicone you know mat in here so i don't have to really do nothing to it right you guys use parchment paper yeah that's okay too so now we just take it i'm gonna work closest to myself i'm gonna come to the edge where i see this at right here and all i do is i just push down right when i lift up usually it sticks but if it doesn't, it's okay. We help it out. Look at that right there. Look, that's what you want to get, right? So I'll just set that right there. Got to give it some room to, you know, expand and grow, right? So we put it here. Cut that out. I'm just going to go ahead and just start cutting it out. Okay, so if you look down here, you can see I got all of these done, right? So this is what I'm talking about. When you have this left over, I almost messed this up. I just wanted you guys to see how it is when I'm done, right? So if I take this, take it. Just bring it over here, you know what I mean? And just try to get it to adhere again to itself. And you guys know the drill. We get this rolling pin out and we get some more out of here. Okay, so obviously you see I had a little bit of overflow, right? So this will tell you how many people you'll be able to feed with these biscuits right here. I could have needed, you know, rolled them out one more time and maybe got myself one more, but I stopped right here, right? So listen, the key to this is we got to go in the freezer, right? Just for 15 minutes. So we're going to do that, but I'm going to suggest that now will be a good time for us to hit the bake. We're going to preheat. 450 degrees we start that now we put this in the freezer and i'll see you after 15 minutes all right so listen my timer went off it's been 15 minutes your tray gonna be nice and cold but if i pick one of these up like this look you can feel that they kind of like just firm up right that's gonna be key because we don't want to like overcook them while we have them in here for 450 degrees now if you guys can see right now i'm ready to go now we finna put these in the oven for for 14 to 17 minutes right so i'm gonna open these up put these in there let me get one in my hand now so we can keep that heat in there and let's go. All right, so now that we got this in the oven, right? Let me go ahead and hit my light so I can keep my eye on them. We got that in the oven, right? Listen, I got a little heat under the bottom. I'll show you guys right now. I got a little medium flame going. I'm heating up my pan, right? I can put a little bit, a dash of a little bit of olive oil in here. Just a dash, you know what I mean? 
you don't need to because listen we're dealing with pork now this is an italian mild sausage right here got a lot of flavor in here but i'm gonna season this up my way you guys do whatever you want to do on your end right now you know i like to have that little bit of that creole flavor on just about everything right so i use that creole kick or i can use my egg seasoning that give it a nice little unique flavor blends very very well with a mild italian sausage you know what i mean so let's go ahead and get this off let's get this little paper off the bottom we got a little heat in this we drop this in and we let that work okay so look if you pay attention right here listen i left it down there you know flat like that just sort of form like a little bit of a crust but you know what i guess it doesn't make sense because we're going to you know break it down and do it like that right now when i put the butter in there that's just like adding a little bit more flavor you can add a little bit more of uh, extra virgin olive oil or regular olive oil whatever you know what i mean and then after you got everything brown then you want to come with your you know your flour right so as you can see you can see a little bit of juice in there but you got to believe me when i tell you look the pork the sausage is, you know, full of flavor and that's where all the moisture is, right? So now we want to put the flour in there and then what we do is we cook the flour taste out and get everything, you know, to become absorbent. You shouldn't see any white right here. Now, right here, look, this is what I'm doing. Look, I started adding my thyme, you know, and anything you want to do to level up anything from here on, you can. You can see that I got that Creole kick over there. Obviously, I'm gonna use that. But you know what? When you say, you know, biscuits and gravy, you know you gotta have that pepper, right? So now adding the Creole kick on here, this is the flavor that I was trying to achieve. Now I like to use that, or I like to use my A seasoning. Most of you guys have that already. If you don't run out and copy it, it'll give you two different flavors, right? So listen, now that we have everything, you know, absorbed, and we come with that milk, right? And with that flour, look at this right here, folks. I'm gonna be quiet and let you guys just enjoy this right here. But this is what thickens it up. Add this, bring it to a simmer, and don't worry, it'll thicken up on its own. Look at that right there. And just wait till we, I show it to you again. Now, look at these biscuits right here. This is what I'm talking about. Now listen, remember we put them in the freezer? Look, that slowed them down from cooking so much so they don't get so crispy around the edges. But look at that, golden brown. You can see the bacon and all of that. And remember I said I was gonna come back to this? Look at there. That's what I'm talking about, folks. Shh, let your mind work. Let's go ahead and take a couple of these. Let's get this one, because he look like he camera ready. And let's see, I'm gonna find another one. But you guys wanted to know how they look. Look at that. You see how they broke up like that? And that's when you don't make them too compact. And I'll probably go with the third one. So listen, I'm gonna take my ladle. And don't forget, the full ingredient list is on my website, smokingandgrillingwithab.com, and that's W-I-T-A-B.com. Now, if you wanna see how it is and how thick I got mine, let's get this. Now we put this over here like this, and we just lay this right over the top. You know what I mean? Look at that. Oh my goodness. So listen, there you have it. It's all right there for you. A lot of times we hadn't even ever made this uh, made this before, you know what I mean? Uh, super easy to make. You know what I mean? A lot of talking, but I had to do that so I can explain it and show the steps, right? But I can tell you this right now, when I go ahead and hit it like that, get a little bit of this gravy, get a little bit of that, uh-oh, we dropped a little bit. Get a little bit of that uh, biscuit, and cheers, y'all. This right here is fire, folks. Listen, I'm not gonna hold you guys. Now you guys know how to do it. Make this, make sure you serve your parents, your grandparents, and if you're fortunate enough to have your great-grandparents serve them this too, and tell me what they think. Now, with that being said, listen, if you're new to my channel, you know what to do. Like, subscribe, and tell everybody out here. There's a channel out here that's simplifying these recipes and taking the mystery out of cooking. Now it's time for me to get that tall glass of ice cold milk, and I'm out. Peace.